Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this video is very special because some of you might have seen the pictures of this build, Henry built, uh, Henry my friend who is right behind me and he's going to explain most of it because I don't have the right to you know, show this. People may think that I built it, I didn't build this car. It's all his work, he broke his ass off in the last how many months? Seven months. Yeah. Fucking hell. So it's extreme. We don't even want to know how many hours went into it, but if anyone wants anything like this, they have to prepare for an extreme build and time. Time is, is the killer because that's the other thing. You know best, you work on your own. Someone mentioned it on, on my on my page, uh, yeah, it how long it took. Yeah. And, and I mentioned that actually you can't have these systems built quicker because you don't have that many people who could work together, even if you have a company where you can go and they have five employees. They don't do this type of fabrication. No, I, I'm, I'm horrific as well. Uh, I know, you're, I, you're sick, you need yeah. a doctor. Because you have serious level of OCD. Yeah, I'd, probably, yeah, I'd have to do anything again. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's run through this system. So this is a sound quality slash... L. L, big L, <laughs> mega L. Um, we are at the trunk, so we may start here to explain what's happening. I I cover what I can, and then you will have to feel with me uh, what's happening. Let's come here. So our main DSP is the Helix DSP Ultra. Um, that sorts out the signal for the system. We have a FIO up front, right, Mikey? Yeah. Yes, correct, a FIO Ultra. M15. So is the M15 at the front as the main source, director controlling the system and it's running three-way front, uh, rear feel over there, which can, which is going to now run in two different ways, as a normal rear feel and as a differential rear feel. So we will have different presets. And then now, Henry, you have to explain what's this one doing here, because I'm not too sure why you needed the audio control. It was over the top. I basically wanted, because there's so much bass involved, I wanted uh, a device that I could instantaneously um, use as a tap simply to turn down the bass or adjust the bass volume without having to go into any sort of menu or press anything else on the Helix. So instead of, you know, on screen switching between the sub and the main uh, volume, I just wanted something straight there in front of my... So you have a physical knob up front, yeah, which yeah. is easy. Plus the fact once these are all balanced, then we can literally just adjust the single gain, which will then control each one of them in, uh, all, all together as one. So I see. nice and simple. So basically this is just for the bass then? Yeah, plus the fact with the split, I know it doesn't really make much of a difference, but it's line driving as well, so I figured with all the split, I could, yeah, I could give this enough. Yeah, you build this carbon plate for the split. <laughs> it looks wicked. Which Even matches the director carbon plate yeah. for the uh, up front. You'll see that in a minute. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the signal section. The front end is driven by that Zapco 6 channel, the AP line 6 channel that I use quite a lot too. Um, well, that, that was my recommendation. If, if someone wants a very nice sounding system and wants to go loud too, they do the job for sure. And we have a 400.2 as well, which was the latest edition, which is now underneath it. Yeah, we will see that from the other side better. So the 6 channel runs mid and tweet up front and the rear feel and the two channel runs the doors with a pair of eights, right? Yeah. Over there, we will go to the front and then show that too in a sec. And then bass. Yeah, we have four of four, four of these Rockfords, right? Yeah, they're the T2500s. So one for each. Yeah. FI, and then now you have to tell which one these are. I know, but... Yeah, these are the uh, 3.7 um, fully loaded, um, yeah, 3.712s. Uh, so seven Neo slugs, three inch coil. Um, they've got inductive cooling sleeves on the coils and uh, I think they've got uh, inductive ring on the top plate and a pole cap as well. So very low inductance, um, 35 mil linear X-Max. Yeah, these uh, subs are ridiculous. Yeah. What can we know about the box? It's a two to one fourth, um, okay. tuned at 53. Um, I did a rough sort of sweep with um, with the rear speakers once I got them in, mm. and um, I mean, as speaking to yourself earlier um, in the build, you said there was a big null in the 50s, and uh, funny enough, it turned out, yeah, absolutely, it was a huge hole in it, about 53 hertz. 
Yep. So this being a fourth, um, uh, it's got a hefty peak on it, especially with the volumes involved. Okay. So I decided that I'd hide the peak in the null. So hopefully this will be pretty flat. Yeah, um, we don't have to fight that. Yeah, it sounds it, so. Well, we will see. Well, I don't know how much Mark he wants to open this car and demo it like that for people. This wasn't built for that. But once you open this trunk, this sub can boom outside. Yeah, that's that's for sure. It's loud. Wants to wants to rip people's head off. Probably. It, it was quite amusing. First out, it started out it was like, yeah, let's get two twelves. And I was like, okay, yeah. and it went to four twelves. And it was like, yeah, should we get the four twelves with uh, one amp? And I was like, or two. And I was like, okay, yeah. And, and then four. within five minutes, it was okay. Let's hit four twelves and four amps. And uh, yeah, that's. Well, it's a big it's a big cabin. To be fair, yeah. you know, one twelve in a tiny hatchback can be fun. <laughs> Two is definitely good fun. <laughs> then you increase the size of the cabin and then you need corn area, if anything, mm. to, to create the, the same pressure. Wheel, this is the long wheelbase model. I, I'm just it's saying it right now as well, plus I may mention it a few times that guys, if you wanna see the build pictures, you will have to go or wait till the end of the video where we will share. Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna take time for me to create this video, but I want to share all the build pictures. Cool. So get ready for like, bloody, I don't know, five, 600 pictures. We will put them in the video because people have to see what really went into it. Because now when it's all finished, it looks clean, it looks simple, but like, you know, how the, the enclosure was built structurally to Even make it rigid. Even before we started rigid, with the, with the, 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 the deadening. Yeah, the, the whole deadening in the van took probably, I don't know, two weeks. Yeah. It's ridiculous. This huge target is actually now not holding too well. Yeah, it goes down a touch, um, yep. I mean, it stops stops yeah. at one point, but um, it's heavily loaded and you have to load it because that port creates proper pressure at the back, that's for sure. I'd be interested uh, to see what numbers it does actually, to be honest. Um, I have to see whether I have the SSA with me. I have to check, because I have one. Yeah. Whether we have eight, nine, oh, sorry, nine volt battery, that's a different story, because they die so quick. Right. But uh, we will see. Um, so, Amplification, yeah, everything is super neat. Color code, color coding, black and blue. We can see that that was the theme here. Beautiful terminal. Some people freaked out when they saw these terminals without protection. I know. Send it. <laughs> but the thing, the thing is, I you, dare someone to throw something in here. Exactly. Um, Yes, you could potentially have issue from that, but to be fair, it doesn't take long to 3D print a cover that you can just put on, I had, slide I had, and then. Yeah, I had thought happy, about doing some. Happy sort of days, you know. You could even have that carbon plated like like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that would look nice, and that would give a bit of extra protection against the crazies, <laughs> the crazies who worry about it. But you know, everything is we nicely. Have. All, all these little details, pe most people don't even realize that, you know, some people would just leave this as the exposed threaded bar, but instead of that, is it a solid piece or you pulled a... It's, a, it's an aluminum tube it's and a tube. I banished it on the drill and mm. then um, installed them so they've got... Uh, so they cover the bolt. The, yeah, literally, yeah, just, the there is a spacer. Exactly, um, but just those tiny little details and everything. If you know also so, the... Um, obviously power cables intersect the thickness of the port to actually travel through because I couldn't get um, mm. I spent I spent yeah. a while experimenting with the heat shrink to see if I could get it to turn without puckering and um, yeah, that crazy. was the limit that was the limit on the turn so I had to, to sink it into the port there was no other way so yeah when you didn't want to extend the port that way either because then yeah. that reduces the space there yeah, and then like little things like this part of the port also acts as a brace for the top section of the buffle mm -hmm. and yeah is it dual layer or throughout it's 36 mil throughout birch, yeah. baltic birch ply yeah yeah and, and then grade a bit ply. of yeah. black plexi at the bottom with your logo engraved and, and and i always look at it thinking geez that guy does that handmade all right handmade, yeah. Yeah, hand, yeah, yeah hand router i don't have a router table I just have a hand router yeah but it, it always looks spot on. Cheers, Keep, keeping, keeping that plexi clean is gonna be fun. That is the most static attracting thing I've ever seen in your entire life. I know too well, I know too well. But 
you know, I, I love you have a similar style, like of what I do and what I like. There's yeah. not a single fucking bolt on display showing how the panels are secured or anything. You know, even yeah, so explain, those transitions, that, that it's just that's quite cool. look tiny little round overs. Everything is flush. All these fuck. Oh, I'm getting an orgasm now. If you look, if you look here, <laughs> oh, man. if you look here, even he has it routed here, so I can get at the at the tie backs. Yeah. Um, should you need that for should, anything? Should, should, what what should, do you need that for now? No, you don't. But I hit yeah. that like that because it looks like it's purposeful, but it's actually to get your hand over the pull. Yeah. Yeah. The panel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That it's was crazy. The, that was the mission. I was like, where can I? How the hell are we going to get this off? How did you manage to actually secure this monster enclosure in this van? Uh, it's a M um, twelve bolted. If you shine in here, you can see between the woofers there. Actually, I see light. that plate. There's a block. There. No, I can I can see that plate. Yeah, there's a block. There's four in here, two underneath the battery tray, and then there's actually one inside the chamber exactly. behind the other side. So because this is lopsided, yeah. uh, I had to balance the spacing um, either side of the chassis rails. And because of the internal air con, uh, this is rear air, air handler unit, I okay. had to, the whole thing shifted over, so hence I the see. offset of the things. But it's yeah, it's M12 even, through the chassis. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, you just stand in front of the build and everything is symmetric on, on the enclosure. You don't even see that offset. Yeah. Yeah, it looks stunning. Let's go to the other side. Then we can see it from the inside because th there's so much, so much in this van to see. Actually, uh, Henry, I had torch. Do you see torch on the bench somewhere? No, I didn't leave it there. Where did I leave it? Well, I will, I will share the pictures if anything. Oh, there you go. We found the torch. Oh, we need that. Look at that. So that's the power distribution section. He built <laughs> a rack for the Yinglong cells, right? These are the Yinglong cells? Yeah, the 40 amp cells, yeah. yeah. Yeah, how many banks do you have? Uh, four. Four, so 160 amp hour. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely solid for this amount of base. So it's a separate rack bolted onto the big enclosure. How many runs do you have? Because you have dual inputs. <laughs> yeah, dual inputs for the monoblock, so you have, that's eight, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Coming off there, and that was also it's nine runs in all. I think yeah. that was also custom built, was it? Or is it the SMD? That's an SMD. Block. That's the SMD, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see now. Yeah. Well, if if you had to do that yourself, then yeah, that would take time. Yeah, I was originally going to use another um, uh, way down the bottom, but in the end, I couldn't get any more cabling from underneath the the seat in the front for the battery. And that's so, where they come in through. That panel. So what thickness do you have coming in? Bloody hell! What those, are, those are seventy that? mils. So you got you got earth live. Uh, that's the speakers. Um, okay. And uh, control. I think actually you know, controls on the other side. Yeah. And then we've got RCA. So okay. Spidiff and left and right auxiliary. Yeah. Because even running the the power cable from the front was a real challenge. Terrific. That people will only see from the from the pictures really. Then, what can we see down there? Little. Your balancer yeah. unplugged because it sings. <laughs> oh, I see. So we'll only use that every other few months, you know, plug it in overnight, let it well, go. At least we can also see the fixing here. Yeah. Each side. Mental. What is that coming from underneath? Yeah, that comes through the floor. Bloody hell. Whoa. They're actually, um, Birch, I removed all of the foam in the areas that these seat. So just behind these, effectively between these points, so inside the box under the floor there was foam. Yep. So I pulled that out and I put in birch ply, doubled it up and planed it till it was the right thickness and then uh, laid that in underneath the floor. So and giving you the support. Yep. So I can then clamp against it because otherwise I was just hugging the carpet down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes this is good for isolation, if anything. Absolutely, yeah. But, uh, and yep. there's another one. That's the right-hand side, uh, sorry, left-hand side loom with, um, uh, that's got the control in it, so from the okay. three up top. So yeah, that's where you can see the 400.2 underneath the 150.6. Yep. Crazy. And the caps. Oh yeah, that that raised question marks in <laughs> a few people's <laughs> brain. DC um, protection, just in case. Just in case for the tweeters, because we have serious power here. But yeah, that is tidy. Or well, like those little details where you used uh, 
heat shrink under the keyboard size. Yeah, all the RCAs are singles, so I had to yeah. link them somehow. So I figured the nice bit of heat shrink on there. Even just, you know, making these custom cables to the length, solder the cables, label them, yeah. and you have color coding on the on the pairs as well, blue, red, black, and then clear, oh well. You know, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, exactly. Then you know what's what. Tweeter mid, mid base, rear fill. Yeah. And all these little things just take so much time that oh, I fully understand and appreciate. Thank um, you, sir. And then, hang on. Where is that braided cable that we could see from pictures? Is that up front in the engine bay or is it here? Is it's not that you know where you braided the separate? Oh, that's under the seat. That'll take a while to get to. <clears throat> okay, people will see that from the pictures that you know yes. you could have had all those cables loomed up running in a braiding like like these you could have done that and it would have been beautifully tidy instead of that you braided them up I watched a YouTube video this this girl was uh, doing I was like wondering what it's like how do you plait stuff and I watched a YouTube video and there's some girl doing plait so I did that <laughs> uh, You're just sick Yeah, but you can see the way it's Bought it down. I guess you use the inserts. Yourself. Yeah, the inserts big, underneath. Big boy self tappers. Um, no, that's literally a um, that's literally a, 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 a five by one twenty screw. Oh, it's a long <laughs> one. And then Is it, the, the only the only screws in the car. Are the yeah, but then you have meat. You have proper meat underneath it. We <laughs> <laughs> We will go there as well and show that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's serious amount of work back here. And then. Then the front, that's where we have to go now, because that is ridiculous. You will only see pictures of the rear feel, uh, how they are installed Nothing back here in factory. Oh, we might be able to see yeah, you. Yeah, so good. which Focal is it? Elite K5, are they? So the, they're the K-series. Yeah. <coughs> 6.5 mids yeah, yeah. Which, uh, with the tweeters. Where's the tweeter? Up? Oh, yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wicked. Simple, simple. But yeah, as, as I saw from the pictures, um, it's using the airspace of the rear cavity and you were also saying that it's like, what, 50, 60 litre sealed box back it's there. Scary. It goes right down. Exactly. They go right down. Like I had I had 20 hertz out of them. <laughs> I was just laughing. <laughs> um, yeah, some yeah. of the Focal mid base drivers can play low and all that. Even if they have high FS, you put them in a large airspace because they yeah. all, most Off of them re require massive airspace, then... Uh, they do silly things. Yeah. Okay, let's come to the front. Let's have a look at the situation there. <coughs> because that's, yeah, okay. It's actually difficult to explain what's happening here up front with these enclosures in the, on the doors, because it looks so factory that people may think it's just a panel bolted onto the door card, but it's not. It's a fully custom enclosure underneath it that I, I don't even have an idea how you manage to sort out the tolerances so the door card literally goes on the top, right? I got a hernia. That's what I did to get it right. <laughs> so you have to be clever, exactly. But, okay, a bit of explanation. So I know that underneath, and this is where I will have to insert a few pictures so people understand what's happening underneath. It's a ported enclosure, correct? It's not anymore. Not anymore. Well, not anymore. it is not anymore. Yeah. Do, you want me, do you want me to tell a story? Okay, go for it. It started out as, as being a ported, um, <coughs> but the information that uh, B2 sent along with their drivers was way off the mark. So okay. I built it all, got it, got it done, and um, originally there was a, a similar shape panel in here. Yes, which was and the port was coming out. Yeah, was yeah. So we had this, this vent coming out there, mm -hmm. and uh, I auditioned them on the floor of the garage. I actually hooked them to my T amp and ran them, and these things were not happy at no way. So the right, I'll seal it, sealed it off. So technically, yes, the chamber originally was ever so slightly smaller than the recommended by V2 yep. um, for the vented side. But when sealed, that chamber, that the, the sealed volume then was actually almost uh, twice as large as Because you used the port. Yeah, yeah. So I sealed it, still didn't like it. So I thought, took the executive decision at four in the morning to saw them in half, return the original pocket back in, and okay. now there I be. So I've knocked the backs of the chambers out. So it's breathing into the door. This is an over the top 
IB manifold now instead. So they're in the door. In the door. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember that port was somewhere over there. <coughs> yeah, and then, yeah, she existed in there. But now I was confused. I'm like, is the port above? But No, yeah. I killed that. It's, um, it was unfortunate. It was like two weeks worth of work down the pan. So whatever. Well, already they had funny specs because seeing such a low QT, yes on any driver is interesting yeah if that's true yeah if that's they're, they're super pack. strong they are super strong yeah and so they're in theory they shouldn't even like this but they're okay so I'm, yeah I'm well it will be it will be it will be processed <laughs> tuned and everything so we will see Absolutely. how they how they behave i just i want to yeah. i want to feel this yeah it's it's relatively soft ish maybe now you had running in time yeah they were quite stiff when they came out of the box obviously uh, so uh, I had Mikey with finding the front end yeah. um, to create something special that can go loud too. Uh, that came from you, right? That was your decision to use those eights. I wanted, I wanted or whose idea was that? I wanted something <coughs> with a bit of kick. I was looking at um, uh, Fatal Pearl B and C, and then we thought we'd stick with car audio, and I, I sort of chose it. These are very similar to a BNC driver. They've actually got a um, uh, the coil is wrapped uh, on. The, it's got a vo uh, it's got a sorry. glass fiber voice coil. Okay. Um, former, sorry. Yeah. So the uh, um, obviously they de sleeve if you cook them too hard. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the idea was that they've actually got half the coil is wrapped on the inside of the uh, former, and the okay. other half is wrapped on the outside. So they share you know a, a thermal a thermal expansion is uh, uh, matched. Yep. So they don't sleep. No, it's 200 watts RMS each. Um, and now yeah. we have 630 behind them. Yeah, they're pretty hefty. So that's what I wanted. I wanted something that, that uh, had enough cone area that I didn't have to make yep. them move so far so we could keep the, you know, keep it Exactly. Nice. Um, it's always better to have larger cone area, I always say, if you want a dynamic system. And I attempted to align them with the head area. So they'll be similar, a similar path length distance from centers to the head. So wherever you're listening. Okay. Well, the good thing is we are running it in three-way, so it won't really matter that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Because then we come to the mid and tweeter situation. Okay. So here we have the ScanSpeak Illuminator, really sexy home audio drivers. And then people could say, okay, yeah, but in a you know, car environment, is it going to last that long? Well, I always say that having a home audio driver in a door air space where you have a wet environment, um, moisture, water and everything, I wouldn't suggest that because they can fall apart. The glue for home audio drivers is not designed for temperature and humidity changes in a car. Having said that, this mid is pretty much, it's not sealed because I saw that this... I, I beat it, yeah. Yeah, yeah this yeah. dash pod and oh, that's another thing that freaked people out. Like, What's that there? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the factory special magic. Yeah, factory tweeter for dings and dongs and all the factory noises in the car. But this is a modular piece. You will see from the pictures that you fiberglass over the pillar, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, beautiful epoxy job, and then you build this up. Yeah, the it's made of uh, Costa um, stereo sticks. Yeah. And then obviously um, filler and all sorts of bits. You also managed to keep this fully functional. Yeah. And the transition, guys, just just look at that smooth transition between the pieces. Then you created an extra buffer for mounting the driver and creating a waveguide for the Mundorf tweeter. So I think we used the what? Is it the 60.1 or the 80.1? 60. The 60.1 Mundorf AMT. It's not a ribbon. It's not a whatever else you may think of. It's an AMT, an air motion tweeter. Um, and again, it's something that car audio people don't know that much. I've used this before in some of my builds and they truly do something different in a good way. And then this system should then have the ability to go loud because these drivers are pretty sensitive. These are not the typical tiny little fringe wideband type 85 86 db sensitivity bullshit these have real proper sensitivity mm. and then that mid being also larger should take take the power way better to keep up with 
whatever else is happening on the base side in this in this van. Too much. In, yeah, that's for sure. So this is the front end this way. Then we have the fire player um, that plays through. Finally, people can see that tiny little converter that comes with the player I always mention. It's a three pin mini jack to funnel. And then from that point on, you have that funnel coax lead running to the DSP straight into the coax input. This way, we don't have any conversion. We don't have digital to analog whatsoever. It's digital data running to the DSP, uh, minimizing conversions. And yeah, people who follow my channel, they have seen that I use many of these adapts because they just do the job. We also have a hack Bluetooth module, correct, right? Yeah. Which is now running at the background and I may just turn this down a touch because YouTube okay, and copyrights is, is a fun thing. We will have to have a separate video where we we demo this car with music. So in this one, sorry guys, you won't see any music. Um, then, come on, you build this thing. <laughs> this is also built up, right? That whole part yeah, it's supporting, glass, yeah. supporting the control mount location because you have to put it somewhere where it's easily accessible, manageable. Yeah. So this is not new to anyone. Um, director, and that's pretty much the system. Oh, yeah, no, we need, we need to show this as well. So we have a nice voltage meter there, switches, I have no idea what for. So we have the power here, so if I don't have the engine running, Mm -hmm. I can have the system running without the engine. Independently. Independently. Yep. And then I've got this one here to turn off all the LEDs. Okay. And this one here is to turn off the subs, the mids, and the fronts. Well, the amps individually. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. Complex. And this it's is... all relay switch as well, so there's no communication between... Um, these, these wires won't act as aerials at all, so it's relay switched up um, to the back, so... Yeah. All the remotes are completely separated, it's entirely isolated. Okay, wicked. It's yeah. Today, today we are okay, going to. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with. Oh the, come on, yeah. show me, show me whatever else we need to see. Nothing, but uh, I really thought about this. So this is a continuation of that. So you can see similar cut lines as this. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> I told you guys. This guy has serious problems. <laughs> Indeed. That beautifully follows. Oh my God. Okay. Is there anything we can see underneath the bonnet? Everything is under, under the, the seat. The seat. That's where the power is. That's where I will have to drop the pictures in and people can see the power section over there. Um, that's where that beautiful braiding is, right? Mm -hmm. So which, which seat is it under at? It's the drivers, yeah. So there was originally the two AGM batteries, we've taken them out okay. and all the fuses etc is in there isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. now the whole car runs off the lithium, the lithium yeah. cells. So there's no mixing, no splitting, no nothing whatsoever. Okay, so the task today is to make this car sing, to tune it, to create a system out of it. Because I always say, yes installation is, is the most important thing. You can't fix shit with the DSP. So the installation has to be spot on, rigid, proper, using the right drivers for the given application. And then, then my job tuning it should be easy. Um, but till that point, no system can get, you know, to the point that, you know, it really shows what's in it until the environment is not taken into consideration because the whole tuning process is rather needed for the environment. This system, as it is, if it was installed in a small hatchback or in a saloon, it would sound completely different. And we have to tune it to, to make everything linear, to get the response perfect from left to right, sort out the time alignment and everything. And yes, we will have different presets that we will possibly show in the demo video when we switch over between presets showing what the system is doing. Cool. I may cut this here and then now you can watch the <laughs> crazy photolog. That's gonna take time. But guys, enjoy watching all this because Henry has put his heart and soul and all his life into creating this monster. Uh, honestly, it, 
It makes me emotional because this is fucking extreme. I know what it's like to create something like this, especially when you have to do it in one hit and there's, there's no break, there's no help, there's no one to ask to give you a hand, you know. Can you help me to lift that fucking panel? Can you help me lift that enclosure? And it, it's super hard work. No, I know. Yeah, he put Henry put his heart and soul into this build. I had um, I had one brief for him, and that was I used to build audio systems twenty plus years ago. Yeah. And I said to I didn't have the skills to do all the fabrication and with the new technology with the DSPs and that it's a completely different animal. Yeah. And I said to Henry, realize my dream that I had twenty five years ago now make something special for me and he's absolutely knocked it out of the park well this system is definitely going down the the books of of the history because i don't think anyone is going to have anything this crazy in a van when it comes to sound quality loud you can see many builds with big bass walls you know hair tricks crazy door builds with a10 you know screaming speakers and whatnot anyone can do that these days but when it comes to un the you know the understanding of how to model drivers, what application to use them in, how to mount them solid and proper, that that is something that requires more than just fabrication skills. There are so many guys who can fabricate and do beautiful work with wood, fiberglass, but the amount of attention that went into this, especially the pillars as well, what would you say? How long the pillars took on their own, or how long would they take? Uh, that was. Uh, if I hadn't got annoyed with them and started something else, <laughs> uh, I think it was probably two and a half, three weeks. A little bit more. Was it? Yeah, it was about four, it was about four weeks. Okay. <coughs> he put in a lot of work. Yeah, but so, easily, yeah, you're yeah. looking at way more than, yeah, like 150 hours just in pillars. But the, the, the reason that where well, they've got the junction is because I couldn't fit them. Um, the way this pillar attaches, yeah. I couldn't actually fit the thing without it, uh, with, with the uh, build on there. Yeah. So I had to do that. And plus the fact... Yeah, you wouldn't be able to pull it out. No. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I had to lean on the dash and it was colliding everywhere. Um, and, and, and even the way he's sculpted this here for the vent, it's, it's just yeah, pheno yeah. phenomenal. Even, even keeping tolerances and lines, you know, that the line of the pod is parallel with the line of that little trim piece. So that tiny little thing. Exactly. You have you have to do it several times, fill it up, send it back, fill it up, send it back, put oh, it yeah, back, yeah, yeah. take it in and out, in and out, in and out. I know this this is ridiculous amount of work. And I told you Henry as well earlier when we had a tea that I'm actually really jealous. Because I would be over the moon if I could build something like this, but most people somehow just can't justify the time that has to go into it. And if I was doing it, yeah, it, it would cost a fortune, let alone what this one would cost in the USA. This is extreme. Oh, check out the um, the inlets on the, on the thing. What's that? In the, uh, yeah, got, uh, a carbon insert in there as well. Oh, we have aux input. What was that? Yeah, that's, this is our main <laughs> ins, but we've got carbon back to plate on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that on the pictures. And we got the carbon in the. Uh... Oh, so yeah, that's where the <coughs> the coax runs into. Yeah. What's the other one? Um, that's bit F, and this is left and right auxiliary end. So okay. Analog, digital. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this this uh, profile was matched to this as best as I could. Uh, I wanted to try and paint this in a similar finish to this, mm -hmm. but I just I didn't have the time. To no, it looks it, right so with the vinyl. Yeah. And and now you're saying I didn't even notice it, but now if I come down with the camera, yes, you can see the same texture, same color, same theme, all the little things. The same way on the top as well. It blends in really nicely. Yeah. Okay. Mega. This is where we leave it. Enjoy the rest of this video, guys. Um, I will drop Henry's link, Facebook link, into this video, into the description, so you can check out his page. You can see the other monster systems he's built in his life. Yeah, you don't work on many, many projects because they all take mega time. So... But any, any creation that people can see, see from you, they, they can tell it's, it's on a whole different level. It's just fucking crazy. I have to swear, because that's, it just, yeah, it makes me. And then if anyone can see this in real life, they will 
maybe you'll feel the same that this is just professional work on a whole different level. And then now, you know, I look at it compared to those nightmare videos that sometimes I have to share. And that's why it makes me feel even more angry that they can't do the basics, not even on a adequate level, you know, it's just poor ignorance and shit. And that's why we have to fight to put the message across to people that this requires actually proper skill set and experience to install systems like this. And I don't even I don't even want to say to people that I deal with car audio these days. No, I don't even say that because they misunderstand it. They are like, oh yeah, big subwoofers, boom boom. I'm like, no, no. And then when they sit in, sit in our systems in our cars or they sit fabrications like this, then <laughs> and the owner is shooting a video at the meantime as well because honestly this is this is history this is now history for all of us getting to the end of a project like this well if it's the end <laughs> i don't know because most thinking uh, i'd like to um i'd like to build in these sides to make it look more like instead of a module i wanted it more integrated into the side so i was just okay. thinking about it but that's up to my view. well I think it's just gorgeous as it is. It makes people just stand and look and go, what the fuck? Pretty much. Pretty much. All right, shut up, guys. Feel free to share this thing. Check out the description. You will find links to, to Henry's page. And uh, check out the, the pictures after this. Hopefully, I can share more like this with you in the future. Uh, but you can also go to my channel, check out uh, fabrication tricks and tips where you see a few crazy builds um, and all the playlists where you see separate projects but nothing close to this one um, there you go enjoy the pictures
Thank you.